with your presence. The Bible said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all manners of sicknesses and diseases, for God was with him even till the end of the age. Father, thank you, Almighty God, because, oh Lord, Father, you are good. Thank you, Lord, because you are kind. Thank you, Almighty God, because, oh Lord, Father, nothing, oh Lord, Father, small is found in you. Thank you because you are greater than the greatest, you are higher than the highest. Thank you, Lord, because you are better than the best. Thank you because you can do exceeding abundantly much more than we ask or think of, according to your power that worketh in our lives. Thank you, Almighty God, because one with God is a majority. Thank you because the heart is of the Lord and the fullness therein, and those that dwell upon the surface of the heart. Thank you because the heart of the King is in the hand of the Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. That he accept our thanks and accept our praises in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Today is the grand finale of the training weekend, and that comprises of Sunday school, uh, Bible college, and I think other educational arm of the ministry. I want you to pray that today God Himself will reveal Himself to us in the name of Jesus, that He will show us the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, the path of purity, the path of power the path of prosperity in the name of Jesus. Ask God to reveal himself to you today. Daddy, that I may know you, the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering, that you may illuminate, O oh Lord, the word of God, O oh Lord, Father, which the ministry stands, O oh Lord, Father, to, to, to propagate in our lives. Let, O oh Lord, Father, your word burn in me, O oh Lord, Father, as the scripture is read in the name of Jesus. Let every darkness in my life be illuminated, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Let darkness give way to your light, O God. Daddy, let me be like that city that is built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Let my light so shine before men that they will see the good things in my life and glorify my Father that is in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of our time, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Lord, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you send forth your word to us this morning in the name of Jesus. And your word will heal us. It will deliver us from our sicknesses and from our diseases. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please let's have our seats. And I pray that God will bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. The theme of the weekend is a blessed people. How many of us believe that we are blessed? How many people are blessed here? I am one of those who are blessed. And I pray that that blessing... We endure in our lives in Jesus' name. Quickly, Genesis 27, 20 to 29, our text. Genesis 27, 20 to 29. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau or, or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's, Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were airy as his brother. Esau's hand, so he blessed him. And he said, Are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. I want you to take note. I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him. And he did eat, and brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which the Lord had blessed. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that cursed thee, and blessed be the one that blessed thee. Praise the Lord. I will quickly read Acts again. I may not be able to go through many scriptures, so I want to just lay the foundation. Acts 3. 25 to 26. Acts 3, 25 to 26. Acts 3, 25 to 26. And it says, Ye are the children of the prophets, 
and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his words, iniquities. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. You know, the word of God is telling us that we are the children of the prophets, we have a covenant with God, and he said, we are the seed. The, uh, he said, and in thy seed shall all kindness of the earth be blessed. If somebody is going to be blessed through you, it means that you are already what? Blessed yourself. And I pray that that blessing will be permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. I appreciate our fathers in the Lord, Pastor Afosse, Pastor Sam, Mommy Afosse, and all the ministers. And I pray that God will continue to be with all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will be with all of us in Jesus' name. But when we're talking about blessing, you know, a blessing is something that goes beyond meeting your needs. You know, if you're an economist, or some of us did a little of economics, economists talk about needs, they talk about wants. Needs are the basic things of life. Your food, clothing, shelter, and all that. But wants are above needs. They are more like your desires. But for someone who is blessed, it means that the, you know, a lot of us, unfortunately, we are still struggling meeting the basic needs. Because some of us are still struggling to eat, we are still struggling with shelter, we are still struggling with clothing. These are basic needs. Am I communicating? Yet, it is the plan of God that we are blessed. Meaning that God wants us to go even beyond basic needs, such that our desires are what? Are met, depending on how blessed you are. You know, God has provided food, if you read Genesis 2, 8 to 9. God has provided money, if you read Genesis 2, 10 to 12. God even promised that he give us, he give us his beloved what? Sleep. Meaning that sleep is your right as what? As a child of God. So you don't need to take all kinds of drugs. Because sleep is what? Is your right. Blessing is the will of God for his children. You need to understand that very well. If you go to Genesis 1.28, it is the will of God that we prosper. Am I communicating? So let nobody make mistake about it. Sometimes when you give your life to Christ, I think that is beginning to change or it has changed. People will look at you with pity, as if you know you are part of the downtrodden in life. But is that true? That's not true. If only they know, you understand, that anybody who has given his life to Christ and is a genuine child of God, watch out for that person. Because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold what? All things are what? Are become new. Meaning that that person has been set, you know, on the path of prosperity. Prosperity of God. And the Bible says that, look, the kind of prosperity that God gives is the one that what? We make you to be blessed such that there is no what? Sorrow to it. You know, you need to understand. So it's the plan of God for you to be blessed. And God says even in Psalm 23, 1 to 2, if God is your shepherd, you shall not want. As long as he's the one that is guiding you, is the one that guards you, you know, is the owner of your life, is the one that leads you, then you can be sure that you shall not want. Because the Bible says, they that seek the Lord shall never lack any what, any good thing. That is the promise of God for you and I. That even in the course of pandemic or in the course of economic crunch or whatever they call it, it is still the plan of God that we will prosper. And I pray that we will prosper in Jesus' name. And you know the good thing is this. Why I like to wait on the Lord and for God to be the one that will bless me? Because it is the blessing of God that endures. Am I communicating? If you play a short cut in life, you understand? Your blessing may also be what? Short-lived or short cuts. It will not last. It is the blessing of God that endures. And you know, there are so many battles in life. So don't join people to go and look for money, to go and make sacrifice and all that. Because you will only give yourself more trouble. Am I communicating? You know, a man has enough trouble to take care of in life. I want the kind of blessing that even if people are fighting me, I will just go to sleep. Because I know that the Bible says, cause costless shall not what? Shall not come. You cannot cause the one that God has blessed. If truly the blessing is of God. And I pray that that blessing of God that make it rich and does not add sorrow. That is what God will add to you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. But brethren, we need to understand something. There is hardly any one of us except if there is something wrong that does not want to be blessed. But you see, what most people fail to understand is that there is a part that you have to play. You understand? I think what Edepo said that any faith that does not place any responsibility on you is an irresponsible faith. Am I communicating? There is a part that you have to play. And that, unfortunately, is the part that most of us don't want to hear. When we read Genesis 27, 1 to 4, you realize that God, when Isaac was going to bless Jacob, he demanded of him something. Is that not? He said he should bring this for him and all that. 
But you see, for some of us now, when you see pastor, you just want pastor to bless you. I'm not saying pastor cannot bless you and God will answer your prayers. But on your own, you know, make up your mind that you are going to do something. And I'm not saying go and give pastor money. The pastors are not hungry by the grace of God. I'm saying that make yourself responsible even in the house of God. Of God. It's unfortunate today that people are still being forced to pay their tithes. How do you then want to be blessed? Anybody who does not pay tithe, as far as I'm concerned, does not even have faith at all. And it puts to question even your faith and your being saved, you are born again, as far as I'm concerned. Because if you cannot go above, you know, what the Bible says, the mammon of this world. If you cannot be trusted with the mammon of this world, then I don't know how God can entrust riches that are beyond the mammon of this world into your hands. As far as I'm concerned, you are better off when you pay your tithe. I've given a testimony here that I have a friend. We started work the same day. And I noticed that he was prospering. And I wasn't prospering as much as he was doing. And I knew him. We were close, best of friends. Sometimes will, I would go and pass the night in his house. He would come and pass the night in his house. And as we came close, I started asking questions. What exactly is happening? What is it? I was earning the same salary as you. Right in my own presence. The boy, you know, a young, young guy is there. We just started. He, before I knew it, he got a three-bedroom flat in uh, Ilupeju. Ilupeju then was still one of the eyebrow area. You know, maybe that is changing today. You know, before I know it, he had got a car. As at the time he bought his, he got a flat, he got a car. I did not have a car. I did not have a flat. Neither did I have that money in my account. You know, it's a different thing if you have that money. You can say, I will wake up and go and do it. And then I started asking myself. And by the way, I was paying my title. Don't think maybe I wasn't paying my title. But I, as I got close to him, I now realized that he was even doing beyond his title. He told me, you know what? He said, I pay 20% tithe. He said, ten, you know, he said, he said 10%, this 10, no, 10 of his money was for mission. 10% tight. As I got close to him, he told me, he said, I already made a covenant with God. The first house I built is going back to God. And as I know now, at least, I know that he has that I know three houses already. He said, you know what? He said, my first car, and I know that he has given two cars back to God. So immediately I knew something is wrong. And I knew that, yes, I was a Christian, but something has to change. And I will tell you the truth. Since that time, I also made my own covenant with God in a different way. And I have not had cause to regret it. I'm telling you the truth. Look, this thing is real. I, have not come, I don't need your money by the grace of God. I'm not yet there. I'm not yet Pastor Sam. I'm not yet Pastor Jose. But God is blessing me. Even in the midst of pandemic, sometimes you can't say it. Some people are crying. Do you, if I tell you now that during pandemic, even as I speak now, I have been blessed much more than before pandemic. Some of you may not believe it, but I don't need to come and tell you. But that is what God can do for you and I. Anything that does not place responsibility on you, you understand? It is not a responsible faith. And there is no reason why you two cannot be blessed. You have to challenge yourself. And I pray that as you do so, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Who are the blessed people? The blessed people are chosen of God. And so if you are here this morning, you've not given your life to Christ, you have not even started at all. You need to give your life to him because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, it is if any man be in what? In Christ. Gone are those days when they will beg you, give your life to Christ. The proofs are there. Are you better than children of God? I don't think so. You understand what I'm saying? Gone are those days when you look at yourself and feel so big that you are better than children. I am not sure that is true. I don't feel intimidated by anybody because... I'm a child of God. The person is not a child of God. As far as I'm concerned, God is blessing me and God has been good to me. And I know so many other children of God that they give testimony every day. So gone are those days when we start begging you. It is time for you to run to the kingdom of God. You have more to gain by coming to God. Am I communicating? You have more to what? To gain. It is for your own good. And I pray that as you do so, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Because God said, I have not called the house of Jacob to seek me in vain. God has not called you to seek him in vain. Am I communicating? If it is God that has called you, you will know that he will take care of you. If I was not to be a Christian today, I don't think my life would be what it is today. I don't think, you know, I'll be as happy, I'll be peaceful as I am today. So many things would have gone wrong, I can assure you. But because we are in Christ, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new what? Creature. And he has not called us to seek him in vain. You have to be committed to the things of God. You have to get to the point where you can speak like Medrach, Shadrach, and Abednego. That, oh king, we are not careful to tell you this. Let it known unto you that even if our God will not deliver us, we will not bow to your idol. You see, gone are those days when we are sorry for people because you know, there is no apology that I'm a Christian. There is no apology that I am born again. 
unless you don't know that the secret of your prosperity is the very thing that people are looking at you and they are ridiculing you. If you allow them to ridicule you, some of you now, you cannot even carry Bible openly because you are ashamed of the gospel. Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto prosperity. I'm telling you the truth. The day you get to a point where you can freely profess your faith, you will see that even God himself will always be with you. We're not saying that trials will not come. Trials will come. You are going to pass through water. The Bible says you will not be drowned. You are going to pass through fire. The Bible says you will not be burnt. Am I communicating? But you see, one thing is sure. God has promised that he is going to what? Be with you. And I pray that as many of us as are here as are looking up to God. The Bible says look up to him. And their faces were lifted and they were not ashamed. You will not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. You have to have confidence in God. To have confidence in God, to have faith in God, you have to trust God. Am I communicating? You have to do what? You have to trust God. You have to believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You have to believe, according to Hebrews 10, 38 to 39, that the just shall live by what? By faith. But it says, if any man draw back, my soul will not have pleasure what? In him. You have to hold on and tell yourself that I am going to stay by this God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to what? To please God. Anybody that wants to be blessed must please God first. And without having faith in God, you cannot what? Please God. Am I communicating? And one of the ways to have faith in God is to study the word of God. Say study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing what? The word of truth. The Bible says faith cometh not but by hearing, but by hearing what? The word of God. So you have to make sure that this word of God is very close to you. Read this word of God. And this word of God is not letters. Because the Bible said the letter killer, but the spirit giver life. He said the word that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. So that's what some of you have not understood. When you see a Babala or whatever, eh, making enchantment, you can also study the word of God. As you study that word of God, there is power that is coming into your life. There's a spirit that is coming into your life. And those spirits are displaying every evil spirit. Every spirit that will ordinarily disturb you or prevent you from being prosperous. Because the Bible says in Joshua 1.8, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your hand. You shall study day and night and meditate upon it. The Bible says, then shall ye be what? Prosperous and what? And successful. And I pray you'll be successful. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have to be compassionate. One of the things that marked out Jesus Christ in his ministry was because he was very compassionate. Am I communicating? The Bible talks about um, he that set his brother in need and shorted off his bowels of compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in him? You understand? So you say your brother is in need. And you shut it up your bowels of compassion. The Bible says, how dwell it? How dwell it? How dwell it? What? The love of God in him. It is wisdom to give. And to give responsibly and reasonably. Am I communicating? Because that is the plan of God for you. Am I communicating? And let me also say this. Because I'm sorry to say this with all sense of apologies. I've seen situations where we will come. Okay, let me, let me be careful. Look. Listen. That doesn't mean that... You should, you should not, you should, because I've seen situations when you come and preach like this. When you talk about giving, people will just come as you are going, especially during the week. They'll just come and meet you and say, look, it's beyond that. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying that be responsible. Don't cheat yourself. If a man has need, like Pastor always say, you have need. But don't turn yourself into a nuisance because you are not one. As a matter of fact, there was a time in uh, our depot's ministry that they would tell them that it, it was almost like people find it difficult to go and ask somebody for something. Because, you see, what is important? Why are you going for, you know, the source? I mean, why are you going for the spillover when you can, you know, tap from what? From the source. Because the same way God has blessed that person, God can also what? Bless you. Don't be jealous of someone. Just ask yourself, what is that person doing? That's all you need to do. You see, as long as the impute is the same and every other thing being equal, like economics we say, you understand, the result is likely going to be what? The same or even more. So there's no reason why you should turn yourself to a beggar. But if you have need, you have need. And it is also a privilege for those who have to give. Am I communicating? Because, you see, it is an avenue for God to what? To bless you yourself and increase you. And I pray that God will bless each and every one of us. In the mighty you. It's because he loves you. So for some of you, maybe something happens and then you are corrected. You know, it's very easy to go away from the church. Because in any case, you are not under any authority. Nobody pays you salaries and all that. And you can easily be offended. But Jesus Christ said, I pay those who are not offended in me. Am I communicating? But you need to understand very well 
that if God corrects you or people correct you, it's because they want your good. Am I communicating? If you see a child that the parents never correct, maybe they have decided that this person, you understand, must end in a very bad way. When people correct you, they probably want the best out of you. Even if they don't do it for the right reasons, you take that correction as long as it's right. Because it does not preclude you from getting your blessings. And I pray that as you do so, your blessings will not elude you in the mighty name of Jesus. But as you see all these things, there are always the challenges in life. That you are going to be blessed or something, you are not going to face challenges. There's always a humble beginning. You understand what I'm saying? There's always a time to start. There's a time when you can hardly eat. There's a time, you know, when you cannot put on good clothes. There's a time when you borrow. But it doesn't mean that is your hand. Even Jesus Christ, when he came into the world, John the Baptist, who was lesser, had to baptize him. And people say, why would you allow him to baptize you? He said, let it be so for now. Some people, God may send them your way to be your helper now. It doesn't mean that God is not going to make you great. But let it be so for now. Let it be so for now. Let it be so for now. Because you may pass through challenges. The Bible said, though thy beginning be small, but thy later end shall greatly what? Increase. So you can start small. You can do anything to start. It does not matter. We have had to start from somewhere too. I've been a home teacher when we finished from secondary school. You understand? I mean, sorry, from university. I had to go back to my alma mater where I was teaching. They were paying me 2,000 naira. And I met one young girl in my class. He said, ah, sir, he introduced me to, his, uh, to her parents. He said, ah, there's one young man in our school. I like the way he's letting him come and be teaching us at home. The mother invited me. I went to the house. They said, we're going to pay you 800 naira for teaching that girl. After that, they had their daughters to eat. They are all your, your sisters. Be teaching all of them. We did not, we saw the big picture. Because the Bible says, though thy beginning be small, thy later hand shall greatly what? Increase. As I was doing all of that, a friend of mine invited me, said there was a lady that was here to pass her, 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 her English or whatever, her school sat, and said, please come and help. He said, okay, that was at Nigeria Force Base. And he invited me over, come and teach her for this period so that she will pass her exam. How much are they going to pay me then? 5,000 naira. I took it up. I told myself that time, I said, I've won the contract. I probably didn't know what I was telling myself then. And you see, to the glory of God, one day as I was sitting comfortably in my office, in one of the banks in Nigeria, the, the, the person that married that lady that I was teaching came all the way from America and was looking for a facility and all that and walked into my office. And I started engaging them. I said, oh, this, they are very rich people. But I was now in position to decide their fate. Though thy beginning be small, the Bible said that later hands shall greatly what? Increase. You know, it doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter what you are doing right now. You must be what? You must be focused. You must know, as our team says, that God is what? Is with you. And if God be for us, the Bible says who can be against us. The word of God says one with God is what? It's a majority. It doesn't matter what everybody is saying. As long as you are focused on God, I can assure you, you know, God of heaven and earth, he can do exceeding abundantly, much more than you ask or think of. The Bible says, according to his power, that what? That worketh in us. That God is here to deliver you this morning. He's here to set you free. He's here to, to prosper you. He's here to take you from the bottom of minimum to the height of maximum. He's here to bless you and to make you a blessing to nations in the name of Jesus. But don't be, don't be discouraged by challenges. Challenges can come. It does not matter. And as you do all of these things, you will see that it is growth that will crown your effort with success. It is not about, you know, how much you labor. Am I communicating? As a matter of fact, I'm sorry to say this. Maybe I will say this for the first time openly. Some people have seen me in the last one year or over, and they will wonder if I still have a job. Because I almost have all the time to myself. You understand what I'm saying? But you know, in this period, where it looks like you are seeing me all around, I don't have a job. Some of you must have wondered, maybe I've lost my job. You will not believe that I have been more prosperous than when I was going to work every day. I just want to encourage someone that it is not of him that will let nothing that run it, but the Lord that showeth what? Mercy. Am I communicating? It is the gift of God that maketh rich and that does not have what? Sorrow. And you see, we are talking about this God that you have come to, who can do exceeding abundantly, much more than you ask or think of, according to the power that what? That worketh in our lives. Brethren, you are in the right place if you have given your life to Christ. And I want you to understand very well that those who are going to be blessed or who are blessed, they will not take counsel from the wicked, as we are told in our manual. I'm trying to follow manual as well. You understand? And don't be surprised when some other people come to, they will say some of the things, but the spirit of God is one, and you can lead them in different ways. Those who, you know, are going to be blessed, don't sit in the counsel of the wicked. 
They don't hang out or go the way of sinners. So they're not going to go the way of sinners. Am I communicating? Just because we want to be blessed. They will say, try this and try that. I can say wholeheartedly, oh, I've never, I've been working for how many years, but I've never taken what does not belong to me because it is God that will bless me. And I don't want the blessing that they will come and knock on my door and they will come and take my wife and the only thing they will tell them or my children is your father has stolen. Eh? As a matter of fact, there was a day that I don't know some people were in church that the one military man came here with a lot of people. Everywhere there. Ah, Brashio came to meet me. He said, Pastor said, I hope there's no problem. Oh. Some people came, they came to arrest me. And I just don't know what I said. Is it that he has done something? Maybe he has embezzled money. They came to look for him. You understand what I'm saying? You know, be rest assured that we God, God, God is with us. And if God is with us, he will take us, you know, to the destination in the name of Jesus. Don't sit with coffers, you know, delight in the word of God. Look, I think when mommy was preaching this morning, she mentioned the word of God, you know, and I don't know, maybe pastor mentioned tight and all of that. The word of God is so central to our prosperity. I won't deceive you. Either you like it or not. It's very simple. This word of God, there's a connection between reading the word of God, studying the word of God, meditating upon the word of God and your prosperity. The Bible says in, 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 in uh, is it Job 1.8, is it Joshua 1.8, that this book of the Lord shall not depart from your hand, that you shall study day and night and meditate upon it. The Bible says then shall I be prosperous and what? And successful. There is a connection between studying the word of God. So those of you who are not studying the word of God, you are cheating yourself, and yet you are saying you are not blessed. I pray that will change from today in Jesus' name. Meditate on it. Delight in it. And the Bible tells me that you are going to prosper, you are going to bear fruit. You see, you are in the right place. You have come to the place where God is ready to take care of your needs. It is only if you are wavering, you know, you are not sure. But if you can stay with God, if you can stick to God, there is nothing that you cannot do. Am I communicating? Because even before you came, there has been always, there is, there is a decree already, there is a declaration that has gone forth that you are blessed. It's just for you to access that blessing. And to access that blessing means that you have to play your own part. If you have not given your life to Christ here this morning, I want you to know that you are not going anywhere. Is there anyone this morning who has not given his life to Christ? Because that is the beginning of accessing the prosperity of God. And it is not a thing of shame. There's always a beginning for everybody. Is there anybody in the congregation today as we round up? You have not given your life to Christ. Meaning that you have not started to, you, you are not ready to access those blessings. Anybody like that? You are here this morning, you have not given your life to Christ. Is there anyone like that? Anyone like that? Anyone like that? Is there anybody who wants to give his or her life to Christ? Okay, good thing that we are all already in the kingdom. And then if you are in the kingdom, then know very well there are rules, there are regulations that guide our life in the kingdom. And those things, if you follow those rules and regulations, you understand, you can be sure that you can access those blessings. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. I want us to be on our feet this morning as we call upon God. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. You are going to call upon him, God. I want to access your blessings. I want to access your blessing. I want to be blessed. Just like you have said, I will be blessed. Daddy, come and let me be blessed, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. I want to be blessed, O oh God. Ask God that God should come and bless you. Call upon him and he will answer you. The Bible says, is there anything that is difficult for me to do? There is nothing that he cannot do. The Bible says he can do exceeding abundantly much more than you ask or think of. According to his power that worketh in your lives. God is God and God is no man. God is greater than the greatest, is higher than the highest. The Bible says the earth is of the Lord, and the fullness therein, and those that dwell upon the surface of the earth. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. That God can open the windows of heaven this morning, and he can pour out his blessings upon you that there will not be room enough to receive them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for the word that has gone forth this morning. I pray that this word will not be let us unto us in the name of Jesus. Let that word go forth, O Lord, as you have declared it to be spirit and, to, and life in the name of Jesus. And let that word penetrate every soul, every spirit, and everybody. Let the word of God, O Lord, Father, make people what you want them to be in Jesus' name. I declare that the heavens are open unto each and every one of us. That they pour out your blessings upon us, O God, that there will not be room enough to receive them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you in Jesus' name. You may have your seats.